Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. And it's a little bit of a different video than usual. Uh, this time, uh, this is kind of an extended version of the pre-ramble. It would be preamble, but my goodness, I ramble. Um, of the that tends to happen uh, in the totally scientific uh, combat testing videos where I give like an overview of uh, the ships or craft involved. So, we're talking about my latest creation, which I'm sort of proud of and very apprehensive about how well she'll do. Um, but to put her into perspective, uh, here we have the Titan Slot, Mark II, uh, which um, as of recently was my most expensive and most block heavy craft so sitting pretty at 1.8 million materials and about 52 almost 53,000 blocks uh, she was actually built on my previous pc which and that is about the limit of what that pc could handle still for longest time biggest and probably meanest craft i've ever had and then we've got this thing, uh, the much less serious, uh, much more silly number 500, which I am inexplicably fond of, despite the fact that uh, it's not optimized at all. It is 500 meters of wooden canoe silliness. As you can tell uh, by the smile on its face, uh, the anime girl dancing on a snake in front of it, and the other anime girl hanging on for dear life at the back here. So this is very self-indulgent and very silly. So, both of these two have been knocked off their perch of biggest and blockiest and silliest uh, by the latest thing I've made. This, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody who identifies as neither lady nor gentleman, this is the Drakenslan. And it might be... Uh, a craft, which is my greatest success or greatest failure, depending on how she does. Those of you who have been paying attention know that Gmodism, fellow from the depths YouTuber, hello Gmodism, uh, built a monster of a craft called the Gimli. It's not the most formidable thing ever made in From the Depths. Uh, there are crafts which are much bigger and meaner than that. Uh, but beyond the Gimli is where you get into PC melting stuff, even for me. So. The goal here is make something uh, to beat the Gimli, and I should have recorded my progress with that, but I just didn't. I just was seized with inspiration upon a day, stayed up way too late at night, and I've only just fixed my sleeping cycle. And what has resulted is the Drakenslang. So this is a weird craft. So this is um, a combination of things I'm comfortable with, uh, things I'm not so comfortable with, uh, some real big design mistakes, um, that I think uh, I'm already aware of and some things that might work very, very, very well. So let's um, just uh, despawn uh, these two here so uh, we have some frame rate because frame rate is good. So the first thing you'll notice is that this is a very, very long critter. So uh, this thing beats out the number 500 by, well, about 78 uh, meters. 578 meters of uh, mostly freeboard above the water uh, for buoyancy and also to mount really big uh, Azzy props. So these are custom props and the reason for this is that uh, uh, this thing, let's actually get rid of you entirely, let's delete you so you're not distracting me, including you canoe copter, thank you. Uh, so the reason I'm using these uh, is for a number of reasons, firstly they're cheaper uh, than um, than uh, steam props or actually regular propellers pound for pound, assuming you have a clearance for them. And you can make them very big and they work above and below water and you'll probably, and you'll see in a moment why that's important. Uh, but yeah, so about half of this thing's length is just um, to mount those giant propellers. And then on the rear here, we have cram cannons. These are big cram cannons, by the way. They're max gauge, and they are a twin setup. So I've learned some very hard lessons with the Titan Slung, and redundancy is key. And in a weird way, uh, Gmodism and I have kind of swapped positions on what is a good cram cannon. 
Not to say his are bad, his are very, very good. Um, but uh, I'm of the opinion that you do need some redundancy in your turret because just um, a railgun shell in the wrong place, if it takes out the firing piece or too much of the barrel, renders the entire bloody turret useless. So having at least two, I feel, is a good idea. And it seems to be paying, uh, paying off uh, in the combat testing I've had this thing do. It keeps shooting... Um, even with like half its firing pieces missing. So these are staggered fire. Uh, by the way, I am trying to keep uh, relatively same block count and cost as a Gmodism's Gimli, which is why this thing is just under the cost of the Gimli. The Gimli is around uh, two million one hundred ninety thousand materials, slightly over, and this is about uh, twenty thousand materials cheaper than that. So. Uh, hopefully, uh, that isn't too much cheaper, so she can still, uh, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Gimli, kind of. And the Gimli is around 80,000 blocks. Uh, Gmodism wanted a limit of about 100,000. This is around almost 72,000 blocks, which is, you know, it's big. This is by far the most block-heavy thing I've ever made. Probably not helped by the giant friggin', you know, uh, things pointing to the front and back. Uh, this is a proven design, by the way. I didn't just make this up. It's uh, actually inspired by a canoe I made a long time ago. I made this little mock tournament. Uh, where should we go? Fun craft, canoe holes, canoe holes complete, canoe hole number five it was. So this little fella uh, proceeded to absolutely dominate uh, the little mock uh, tournament I did. And part of that is because uh, the hull is weirdly efficient uh, for speed and maneuverability while still having very big guns on it. So uh, it's basically, it's just like all the space in front here is just kind of empty gaps. Uh, this is back when I thought poles were a good idea, and I apologized for that. Uh, but um, this thing absolutely swept it uh, because it was uh, fast, it was maneuverable, and it basically, you know, saved a lot of materials by not fully uh, fleshing out uh, the bow and the stern. And that's the idea with this thing. This thing's long, uh, very maneuverable, and it's just... It has just extra blocks. And shooting at uh, this, at the front or back of this thing, is a complete waste of time. Which means it holds onto its propulsion for quite a while, actually. And they're not... Um, they're not defenseless. Uh, these are pretty much solid pillars of metal, and there's a little heavy armor ring around the spin block over there, so it even has some smoke hidden here as well. So its uh, face and bum is laser-proof. Yeah, I should get back to the cram cannon. So these are staggered fire. So uh, the one on the left uh, is a hollow point, narrow angle frag, lots of testing. Uh, confirmed what people have told me is that if you're going for a big hollow point, uh, you need to set the frags uh, to a narrow angle because the hollow point makes a big hole and the fragments sail straight through it and you can put fragments um, uh, straight through a megalodon and out the other side if your cram cannon is big enough. This one isn't quite big enough for that. Um, and then following the hollow point is a regular AP shell. Uh, you can see the synchronization here, so um, what the... this wasn't set up properly. That explains a lot. Oh dear. Oh dearie me, I need to do that again. Uh, let's just check here. So that's number 10. Why did you do this, you damn fool? Save the Drakens long. Save, save, save. Oh dearie, dearie me. That does not bode well. And yeah, it's in the Hydrofoil section, which needs more craft in it. So, the idea is that the Hollow Point goes first and. The Gimli has formidable anti-cram measures, but if you stagger the fire of crams, I have found, uh, what happens is that it kind of blows its load early. All those uh, direct input fed sewers, they fire, all the missile interceptors fire, and then uh, following uh, that hollow point shell, which is the one that I'm more okay with getting shot down, is this nasty AP shell, which will then uh, sail, sail straight through many layers of armor and make a beautiful big explosion, which is very nice. And moving on, you'll see that um, this is a super firing uh, turret. Uh, the armor of this thing is something that I haven't done before, and it seems to work well. 
Uh, I've always had a problem with super firing turrets because uh, the neck of the turret, the barbette, uh, always feels a little bit lackluster in protecting the turret itself. So you can see that in things like the Titan Slong and older vehicles uh, like the Stahl Slong, in that um, the super firing turrets tend to get disabled uh, pretty easily simply because um, it's not as overkill as what I've been doing here. So, uh, Gmodism's. Uh, plan for the Gimli is basically not have thick chunks of armor and that empty space is the best armor. He's correct. I am not sure how well uh, this armor is going to stack up to any of the weapons. It'll probably buy time uh, against um, some of the lighter weapons. Uh, but the Doom Crams that he's got packing on that thing is going to go straight through this. So, uh, yeah, this is mostly for other things, to prevent against other things from being a problem. Like, particularly, like, against missiles and stuff. Like, even big thumper missiles, they have a hard time just getting through uh, this amount of block uh, hit points. But, uh, you'll go down here, you'll notice uh, that the armor is pretty thick, but also fairly economical. So, it starts on the outside here. I really should have tested this, but, um, Gimonosum uses this on the Gimli. Uh, these, this arrangement of square corners is two benefits. The one uh, that he talks about most is Hesh fooling. So if a Hesh shell hits this, uh, the way Hesh shells work is that they spawn their fragments at the nearest air gap. So if a Hesh shell goes, you know, and hits on the slope here, it'll spawn uh, fragments uh, somewhere you don't particularly mind. It'll spawn them on the outside, so to speak. I haven't tested that myself. I was meaning to, I forgot. Um, but apparently it works. And also, this basically means that there's a little bit of kinetic damage reduction along the entire hull, even if um, it's being shot at dead on, which is uh, very, very handy. It means that no matter what, there's a little bit of kinetic resistance, and it seems to work. This, um, uh, this craft seems to stand up to all but the very strongest uh, kinetic shells, at least for a little while. It's not invulnerable, so yeah, the armor uh, definitely does a decent job. We have to see if the job is decent enough. So, you can see here, we got those square corners on the outside, two layers of metal, a layer of wood, two layers of metal, layer of wood, two layers of metal, layer of wood, two layers of metal, layer of wood, and then you've got a layer of uh, heavy armor beams, of course, and then an inner citadel of alloy to reduce, uh, to reduce the weight and help with the floatiness. You'll notice this thing is not floating very well. Uh, that's not a huge problem, and we'll get to that later. I just realized that uh, I forgot to uh, do important things in here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I need to fix that later. But uh, the Citadel armor uh, actually continues upward uh, into the barbette. So uh, I have found that it is a good idea to do that because if you do not do that, uh, you're basically creating a lovely weak point uh, through the deck armor itself. And when you're dealing with things that are... Uh, on the level of like big railguns and doom grams, you don't want weak points because it will find them, and uh, it means that all the armor you've spent so much money on is a complete waste. Uh, but um, armor is not the only thing; it also has a lot of missile interceptors, and I would like to apologize uh, to Gmodism and everyone else. Uh, this is kind of breaking his little uh, rules for like destroying the Gimli. Uh, mock tournament, or not mock tournament, it is a tournament. Uh, he doesn't like small interceptors because they're laggy, and I agree, they are. I shouldn't use, I shouldn't be using them, but uh, I didn't really have much choice here. I tried this with medium uh, interceptors mounted on the turrets, and it just didn't work as well. It, they didn't fire enough, I, there wasn't enough um, damage per second to deal with incoming missiles, and the Drakenslung is really vulnerable uh, to missiles. Uh, without them, so I'm sorry about that. Like um, uh, anyone who wants to test the Drunken Slung, uh, feel free. Not that I can stop you to like remove those interceptors, um, because frankly, like you know, they do tank the frame rate quite a bit. Uh, what doesn't tank the frame rate, thankfully, is these things. So these are copied uh, mostly straight off the Gimli. These are uh, direct input uh, Seawiz. So these are 500 millimeter. Uh, APS shells, and if we go here, you can see deflac. They're just massive uh, flak shells, 10 meters long. They do 31,000 flak damage. Uh, 
Explosion radius is capped at 30, so this is not as impressive as it looks. Uh, but uh, these are uh, pretty good at dealing with initial volleys of large missiles or crams. Uh, this thing, admittedly, is uh, got more blocks and is more expensive than the Stronghold, but the Stronghold literally cannot touch this. Um, not just because of this, uh, but you'll get to see that in a moment. Uh, the lasers here are mostly an afterthought. They're to deal with um, uh, things that the guns can't hit easily, and um, basically deal with ICBMs and stuff like that. So, yeah, like uh, without them, these are kind of improvised. And speaking of improvised, let me show the internals. Uh, I am kind of expecting this thing's compactness to be its downfall because I can't help but um, build things compactly. So there's lasers down here, there's a big ass AI compartment all in one place. Not smart, don't do that. Uh, here are the lasers uh, themselves, they're little 2Q lasers. They do piddly damage, but it's enough to deal with lightcraft. Uh, lambs, uh, these are okay-ish lambs they're not the best again these are just this is me this is the point of the build where i'm just like oh damn it damn it i didn't plan ahead enough and then like well you just gotta make do really uh, asymmetric transmitter design here so we can get uh lambs nodes up and running we've got one big steam engine uh this thing does have redundant engines which is very nice we've got um uh, a signal jammer here, and this is here, uh, not to fight the Gimli, but because I was testing this thing against, um, what's it, against things like the Empyrean, against the Baskin Shark, against, um, uh, other things that use remote missiles, and, um, it needs them, it really does need that. Uh, we've got other ACBs here, just controlling the boilers, we've got other things controlling, uh, the shields, because this thing does have them. And they're actually down here. You're probably already guessing what kind of craft this is. So here we have a shield. It's pointing upward and it kind of protects the custom jets in here. These are for a little bit of extra power generation. Let's go here, jet generator. Just a smidge of power. The original plan was for these things to be the main power generator of this craft. That didn't work out very well. So instead these are here uh, for roll control. And you might wonder why the hell something like this needs so much roll control. Oh baby, just wait till you see. And uh, then we've got some uh, extra injector engines here, just for giggles. And uh, we've got our big ass ammo compartment because this thing really does burn through ammo. Lots of material storage because it burns through materials. These are railgun chargers. Now I tried, and I know people are going to be annoyed at me for not using steam to generate electricity. These things just work better. They're faster, they just do it better, and I'm just better with fuel engines. So I apologize. Uh, the moment I figure out how to make a decent steam uh, turbine, like in the space I have here, I will probably replace these because they are expensive and they are very fuel hungry. Speaking of railguns, uh, that's what's up here. Uh, these are probably uh, the best thing about this craft. Um, they are the first railgun hybrids I've made, probably ever, that I'm genuinely happy with. So, these guys hurt like hell. So, for the most part of the testing of this thing, and I'll just show you just how many versions have gone through here. Uh, one of the best tips I've gotten from Gmodism is test your craft against itself. And then the version you roll with is um, the one that wins. So, we've got prototypes over here prototype stage two you can see this thing was called the giant super slope for a long time so i was testing things like all right does it need to be made of metal can we drop the crop can we drop the cost of it um by using reinforced wood instead spore alert reinforced wood is kind of material inefficient so no and then tried it with interceptors and then tried like you can see that the this version here the original prototype uh, beat these out by the way so we stuck with it here then i tried aim point spoofing i tried to make uh, clusters of blocks at the ends that didn't really work and uh, it occurred to me much later that uh, the, these custom props are a whole bunch of uh, one meter blocks anyway so it's already acting as aim point spoofing uh, without even thinking about it so that's nice um, then over here we've got bread control props as it turns out it needed that because uh, there was one uh, custom fight and uh, future me if you can remember to put up the screenshot from that uh, where one of the prototypes ended up 
uh, in space because it lost pitch control. And then it's got uh, small interceptors. I tried sticking stuff in the hull. That didn't work very well. ECM, that worked very well. Wooden freeboard. Uh, this thing originally had solid alloy uh, for these uh, sticky outy floaty bits. Um, and then uh, I saved literally, I think, like, at the very least several hundred, probably thousands, uh, of material points by converting that to wood. So that was a sweet move. And also because, like, you know, it doesn't matter if this gets blown up, really. Like, unless this gets completely severed, which isn't that likely, even for giant hollow points, because it's like three meters thick, um, it's fine. It's mostly wood, and that works just fine. Um, then what else? Wood freeboard interceptors. Trying the interceptors again. I tried interceptors multiple times uh, with this thing. Then tried it with Circle AI, and that initially seemed better, and then turned out to be worse. Uh, bouncy bread. I tried to make this thing bounce up and down uh, using breadboard by uh, setting a timer to adjust the pitch uh, on these propellers. So the thing bounces up and down, hopefully to make it more evasive. And that, weirdly enough, made it more evasive against advanced cannons. It made it worse against cram cannons. Uh, which is why we're not going with that anymore, because the Gimlay's cram cannons are probably the scariest thing about it, apart from the railguns, um, and apart from the lasers. So, yeah, like, uh, we cannot afford to get hit uh, by the Gimlay's doom crams. Uh, they will probably one-shot us. Um, so, yeah, they one-shot most things, actually. Uh, bouncy bread, bouncy bread, narrow angle HP frag. So this is where I'm testing uh, if the narrow angle on the crams is a better idea. And then solid sabo slugs, this is where we get to what these railguns are actually armed with. So for the most part, um, for most of the, also uh, these uh, turret, these barrel decorations are recent. I love using rubber for this. Uh, no, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I love it. So let's go over here, there's a bunch of shells here. So what we have here, we're going to start from the top. So the middle turret of this low, the middle gun of this lower turret uh, is an APHE and with some uh, spicy heat in there. This actually makes a bit of a difference against stuff that has really strong armor. If the uh, armor piercing doesn't get it all the way through, it'll put a heat stream through it just to be annoying, so that's fun. About 13,500 uh, 13, railgun draw. Uh, does just enough armor pierce to uh, put a hole through layers of metal, so 21,000 uh, kinetic damage. Um, armor piercing isn't the best, uh, but it does almost 4,000 explosive damage, and secondary heat penetration metric is 44. So that can get through a layer of heavy armor, which is very important. So the idea is it goes through the outer layers, just punches through them, and then when it hits something it can't penetrate, it, you know, it pokes a hole in it and puts nine heat fragments uh, with over 400 damage each through it. That seems to work pretty damn well. And then we've got uh, this thing, which is quite similar, except it's uh, 180 degree frag, you can see here. Uh, that makes a hell of a mess. And same story, same kind of heat setup, and uh, same kind of kinetic damage as well. And then, um, this is something I don't usually do, I don't usually use disruptor shells, but against things with strong shields, this really, really helps. So. This is an interesting disruptor shell. It's quite strong, so it reduces shield strength to 6.9%, which means if even just one of these shells uh, goes through a shield, that shield is rendered almost useless, which is very, very useful indeed. And it's still got 1,800 EMP left over uh, to cook stuff. And because it's got these solid warheads on it, and these are just so the thing moves as fast as the other shells uh, on the turret, uh, it actually packs a little bit of a punch, like, it, I don't think it can penetrate, I don't think Disruptor Conduits can do that, uh, but if it hits a, a solid block, if it hits a heavy armor beam, it can take it out, which is quite nice. And then, and like I said before, recent thing in the prototyping, we've got this Top Gun here. Hey, Top Gun, that's a movie. Uh, and what we've got here is a pure Sabo slug. So it's got the same rail draw, and this is not the ideal way to set up a pure railgun slug, by the way. This is an improvisation uh, because I'd already built uh, this turret to very, like, exact standards, and I didn't feel like doing the whole turret over again. 
and in hindsight I probably should have. Uh, but this does 15, uh, almost 16,000 grenade damage, armor pierce of 69, <laughs> the funny number. Um, but that goes straight through a lot of things, so uh, these are actually now, look about it, there's a similar, uh, similar stats to the railguns on the Imperium. So this goes straight through 8 meters of metal, and uh, if it finds heavy armor, it'll go, that'll go through about almost 3 layers of heavy armor as well, stacked heavy armor to boot. Um, so yeah, like, uh, these are not as damaging as the other shells, but they're great for just poking holes and things. And these guns aim for the same spot, by the way. So the AI is set up so that uh, the main guns concentrate on a particular cluster of blocks for about 20 seconds. Uh, which is specifically to counter the fact that the Gimli is big and spaced out. So, uh, in the tests I've done with these weapons, I have not fought this thing against the Gimli properly yet. That'll be in the next video, look for that. Um, but it focuses down on an engine or a cram turret or something like that. And um, that works a lot better than just spreading out uh, the damage willy-nilly because the things like the Gimli tend to be quite good at taking surface damage because like the outer layers don't matter. They're there to slow things down. Uh, let's talk about decorations before we talk about anything else. So let's just elevate you. So I made this little custom decal. It's not my best work. It's just, you know, it's a fun dragon over here, the Rockenslang. If you're wondering what that means, uh, it's a kind of horrible bastardized mix of uh, Afrikaans and Dutch, which are very similar. Uh, Draken just means dragon uh, in Dutch, and slang means snake, so dragon snake. So it is quite snaky um, in the fact that it's really long and quite low slung. That's an element of this thing's design. It's quite flat. It's a uh, almost 600 meters long, but it's only 47 uh, meters tall at its tallest point, which is this weird uh, afterthought of superstructure. This is really vulnerable, uh, but the idea is that um, a piercing shell going through this does literally nothing. If it gets hit with a hollow point, that's a different story. Uh, in fact, I could have made this entire section here, just I could have cut that out completely. Um, but I didn't, so yeah, this superstructure, like, I'm not winning any prizes for that, and people are probably right to be mad at me. But anyway, so, um, where was I? Alright, so, then, hopping into the control structure, so you know how most ships are designed so you can see where you're going. Uh, this ship doesn't do that. Like, the way I built this thing, I'm like, oh, damn it, I'm like, th there's no superstructure on this thing, you can't see foot, so instead you see... MOTIVATION! You can do it. So, I suck at decorating stuff, and I couldn't think of what to stick it here, because it's already, like, kind of unrealistic and weird. Uh, so, I've instead put, like, orange uh, warning stuff uh, around where the custom jets have intake slash exhaust, and they go up through the superstructure. And I've put art in here. So, here's a... I just didn't actually draw anything specific for this, apart from the icon you saw uh, on the bow. So, instead, what I did, I went into me art folder where I've done art, and uh, it's just stamped, so that in the highly unlikely event that people try and nick me art, uh, they have some extra work to do. So yeah, red dragon, dragon themed, uh, I don't know what possessed me to make this, but like, take this as motivation, and hopefully this gives us good luck, touch wood, when fighting things like the Gimli, I think we might need it, and let's elevate you out of the freaking water, and here's another dragon, uh, modeled after, like, you know, extinct pterosaurs, so it's got cool dragon, cool dragon, uh, pure, wholesome motivation, man in grass skirt, I hope I don't get in trouble for that. And then you've got some more silly stuff over here, so we've got over here, we've got a Chinese style dragon, who is just vibing really nicely, and um, yeah, that's kind of like what this thing does, it uh, runs around and vibes, and then... We've got the other spirit of the Drakenslong, so to speak, once you look past the scary exterior. Uh, pink dragon uh, flying through, well, not with the wings, let's just say that. And yeah, so also, smoke defense, we have that. And this thing actually spawns in smoke, so that's a very important feature when you're up against uh, things like the Gimli, which has very strong lasers. The Gimli actually does this as well. There's a smoke uh, projector in the front that triggers on spawn. So it stops you from getting immediately gutted uh, by big stupid lasers. So we spawn this guy in, you'll immediately notice... Foom! Smoke. Very handy, and in particular, 
uh, around that front turret, it gets smoked a lot, because uh, these main turrets on the front here, I don't know why I just pointed at my screen, you can't see that, um, they, uh, they kind of, um, they, uh, they need to be protected. And I just realized that uh, I've already given away uh, this thing's uh, most notable feature, which is its speed, uh, with the V menu. A top speed of 92 uh, meters per second. So let's send you on a journey. So yeah, this whole thing is a hydrofoil. And quite a fast, quite a maneuverable one. So this is possibly its best defense against uh, the Doom Crams on the Gimli. Is that this thing is just damn fast. So, how fast are we going? We're already going like 80 meters per second. I don't know if this is going to work out. We might just have to get lucky. You'll notice that on the props themselves, let's just have a look here, you'll see uh, that there are custom rudders uh, set to a max angle, which means that uh, the rudders themselves are contributing to staying clean out of the water. It has extra ones in the middle, uh, just for insurance. Uh, there's ac that's actually a shield compartment to protect the hydrofoils. And uh, we've got a sonar on a spin block around here, and it turns out that... Um, I should have been using 90 degree sonars a lot more because they're very good. It means that this thing uh, with those super cavitation uh, guns in the front uh, is death uh, to submarines. So yeah, like uh, the black current gets absolutely curb stomped by this thing. And um, this thing can literally outrun missiles that don't move fast enough because it just keeps turning and spitting interceptors at them. So I think it's time for a, dem a little demonstration what this thing's capable of. Uh, and apologies for not, like, recording uh, the, um, basically the whole building process. Like I said, I was seized with inspiration, and uh, I made this, well, thing. We're, and we're gonna have to see. If it can't beat the Gimli, I was considering doing it because I was just being stressed out of my mind building this thing, and also just my life in general. I was thinking, like, alright, you don't get named until you beat the Gimli. And that's a little bit unfair, because this thing is fun, at the very least. Uh, so, like, we'll keep her. We'll keep her. Even if she doesn't beat the Gimli, which I kind of doubt she will, because, you know, uh, this is very on-brand for me, you probably noticed. And uh, going on-brand is not the way to beat other people's vehicles. You have to stretch your horizons a little bit. Just not lengthwise like this. Uh, so let's chuck you, Miguel, against, uh, firstly, the Stronghold, just to show off. Um, the Stronghold is much smaller and cheaper than this, and my good, I never thought I'd say that about any of my craft. So immediately, APS is launched, and then you see the Diff Seawiz delete that entire cram volley. So uh, it's possibly not as optimized as the, uh, as the Diff Seawiz on the Gimli, but it still works pretty well, especially for the opening stages where this thing is most vulnerable before it gets up to full speed. And the hollow points are whistling in, they make a huge mess, and so does that. That, uh, these crams are no joke. Honestly, the cram cannons are, um, not the main draw of those things. Those railguns really are the, really are the actual business. And two huge missiles, no problem, deleted immediately. And this thing is actually fastest in combat. You can see it's like that speed timer ticked up to about 94. And the lasers double their seawers, so already lasers are getting damaged and the interceptors finish things off. And annoyingly, sometimes uh, the diff seawers um, jumps the gun a little bit. Also, I should mention as well that uh, uh, these little diff guns are all set to have staggered fire, so... Uh, they're less likely, not impossible, they're less likely to waste all their damage uh, all firing at the same thing. So, that's a handy feature that seems to work very well, and we literally run rings uh, around any craft that can't consistently hit us. Uh, like the Draconia, uh, the Draconia is cheaper uh, than uh, the Drakenslung, uh, but the Drakenslung literally runs rings around her. Like, she just, you know, she just dives like uh, she literally just you know circles around the back and like put shells uh, into her at every angle it's quite amazing to see actually uh, so yeah this is a this is a craft that I'm pretty happy with um, I am 50 50 over whether she can beat the Gimli though I somehow doubt it 
uh, because the Gimle, I feel that G mod has put a lot more effort into the Gimle uh, than I put into the Drakenslang. Um, you know, like it's just, you know, you look at the interiors of the Gimle, you can tell a lot of love and a lot of thought went into it. Uh, whereas I did that thing I usually do, which is like I start out with a plan and then uh, I kind of just, you know, keep going and start improvising along the way, hence the lasers and the lambs and stuff like that. Uh, so, but this thing has been uh, pretty thoroughly combat tested, uh, and since I didn't want to fight the Gimle straight away, I instead was chucking, um, putting the Gimle through tests, and then putting the Drakenslang through the same tests, and it's pretty similar results. Uh, the the, uh, the Drakenslang can beat most things that the Gimle beats, um, and in some cases does better. So against stuff with um, uh, that spams like big missiles, for instance, um, uh, the Drakenslang actually does better because it can outrun them as well as shoot them down. And against other things, it does much worse. Um, annoyingly, this guy is kind of vulnerable to big railguns, so if you want to kill this thing for yourself, uh, by all means, uh, kill it with big railguns. Like, you know, you don't need my permission, but you have it anyway. And uh, yeah, the Stronghold is having an extremely bad day. In fact, like, this thing can take on two strongholds at once, and, um, yeah, this thing can also happily take on things like the Singularity and the Megalodon, almost as an afterthought. It's a weird feeling, actually, when, like, something you've built, um, isn't even specifically designed to take something on that's giving you trouble, and it just does it. Admittedly, by being bigger and more expensive, but, yeah, it can manage. So yeah, the Drakenslang, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a thing, it's a big thing, and yeah. Look forward to it fighting the Gimli and a whole bunch of other stuff, because uh, I'm gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna put this big girl through her paces, because uh, she very much needs to. Did she lose any blocks? She did not lose a single block uh, from fighting the Stronghold. And as you can see, the guns are still firing now that the stronghold is uh, sinking. That's just mean. So, that does it for this uh, rather long ramble about my latest craft. Um, I've done a whole series on building a battleship, and now I've condensed it basically all into one video. I guess there's something to be said for efficiency. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, support me on Patreon on YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths where the Drakenslung uh, tries to be the dragon uh, to invade the hall which the survivors of Ragnarok fled to, which is the Gimli. Farewell!